All right, just before I get started on this, I'm going to do a little self-promotion here. I get requests, you'd be surprised, from people over in Europe uh, and Asia, people who would love to come and sit here and learn from me. And it's just, I don't have the space for it, and uh, I don't want people to go that great expense to do that. Uh, there's a cheaper way to do it, and I have instructional DVDs on how to sculpt, and I on different subjects, uh, like full figures of uh, humans, uh, uh, horses, and uh, now I have a, a DVD on how to make armatures for animals as well as human. And uh, all of them are in a blog link that I have below this video uh, where you can see a review of each one of the uh, offerings and also at the end of each one of those videos I show how you can go through the process of purchasing my DVDs. Time to play with some clay. I'm going to start out uh, by telling you that I'm going to use this Ronsonol uh, lighter fluid later on uh, in the uh, day today um, and a oil painter's brush. Uh, you get an oil painter's brush because it doesn't shed the hair in the brush. You get a cheap brush uh, from like Kmart or Walmart or some other place that sells uh, cheap items for would-be artists, um, you're going to get brushes that shed uh, hair and then you're sitting there picking the hair out of the clay. This is a plastiline style clay and so it never really hardens. It, uh, it will, over time, the oils in the clay will evaporate out of the clay, but it takes literally years. And depending on what you put uh, underneath the clay, it uh, could evaporate even faster. There are uh, armatures that I've uh, used from, like, say, Sculpture Depot, uh, true form armatures, um, that if you let them sit for too long, that foam under the clay will, well, the, the, the oils will evaporate faster. It'll still take years, but it will evaporate eventually and the clay gets hard uh, and hard to work with. And it just takes a matter of heating it up to get it started again. But I'm going to work on Sitting Bull and uh, try to get his face finished today. And then I'll hit that with uh, some Ronsonol at the end. All right, uh, enough blabbing. Uh, let's get started on my clay. For those of you who uh, didn't see yesterday's video, I am using a couple of uh, pictures that I got off the web. They're the, well, the least you know, a lot of the a lot of photographs that you work from are distorted. And they because of the lens or this type of lens and old daguerreotype or old time cameras from the 1800s format cameras that shot large film formats uh, were much more accurate. And uh, I've got a straight-on shot of uh, Sitting Bull's face and a side view of his face. And I've got it pretty much the size that I'm working on. Um, so anyway, I'm, I'm taking the measurements off these uh, two uh, pictures that I've got of him. One side, almost a side view, and one uh, from 
the front. Now, I'm gonna work on the face, and the reason I'm doing the face first, because if it doesn't work out, nothing else is gonna matter, and why waste my time on the rest of it if the face doesn't work? And right now, I'm kinda happy with the face, and lately I've been sculpting uh, portraits of people that are no longer here, uh, they're uh, passed away or uh, they live in another state and they can't be here so I have to work on photographs and it's, you can do it, it's just, you know, you have to learn to interpret what you see and that's what I'm doing. Alright, let's get started, enough talking. If you hear ticking in the background, it's my wall clock in here. Oh, there we go, dropping a piece of clay again. That's a wall clock that I got in the studio. I notice that uh, area right here that I'm showing here is a kind of like a little triangle bit of uh, musculature or skin or cheek that comes down off of the uh, cheekbone and joins up with uh, the features down here and that's the reason why. And you can barely see it because the picture is terrible as far as shadows go and he didn't take it for a sculpture, he took it to uh, sell cards with uh, his portrait on it and Sitting Bull, a lot of these Indians uh, like Sitting Bull and, and Crazy Horse, not Crazy Horse, but uh, uh, Geronimo and people like that had pictures taken themselves and and I've seen where people think that they were forced to sit for photographs, but they weren't. Uh, these people made lots of money off of selling postcards of themselves to uh, tourists who would come to their campsites and uh, Sitting Bull was a uh, star of uh, Buffalo Bill's Wild West show and so he made a lot of money off of his uh, postcards as well. Um, I had a teacher in sixth grade who actually went to one of Buffalo Bill's Wild West shows with her family when she was a little girl and uh, man I tell you that really brings a history to life when you know people who participated or who saw these type of events and uh, that just shows you how not long ago this was. Anyway, we're just fortunate to have photographs to work from. A lot of times a photographer would uh, soften the pictures and would get rid of any wrinkles and uh, what little wrinkles I do have is all I'm going to put in. I'm not going to try to put more in than I have. A record of. I got so many tools, I gotta search for them occasionally. <laughs> Now 
Now, it looks like he didn't have bags under his eyes. It didn't go all the way around. They went down to his cheek and then just sort of blended into the cheek. The cheek had a form to it. And uh, the eye socket. has to be indicated. These are things that you'll learn to do after you've studied the muscles of the face and the bone structure and all that stuff. It takes many years to get to where you can do these things and not even have to think about it. Like I notice uh, here around the hair, you can see just a small rise, and that's his cheekbone. And uh, I'm going to put that in there. You don't want to overdo. Something like that, you want to. do it in small. Additions of clay, not large additions. Now I'm just spilling in. A lot of this is going to be covered with hair, so I'm not going to try to do the whole skull. I'm just going to do the part that will be a in view on this side of the hair. We've got kind of a roundish forehead. There's no deep recesses on the temples of his face. There is a large muscle here. comes off of the uh, cheekbone. His ears really don't show. Women would, in some tribes, but women mostly would braid their hair and put the hair over and around behind their ear. Uh, a lot of tribes didn't do that. Uh, Sitting Bull was a Hunkapa uh, Sioux Indian, and uh, he didn't uh, put his hair behind his ears. He may have occasionally, but uh, most of the time he put it over the ears. But he made the braid tight to his neck. And so when I get ready to do his hair, I'll take that into account. Now the one thing I don't want to do is make the face too wide in the jowls. So show you what I do. I take uh, the center point and I bring my caliper to the uh, outer edge of the face and it's right on the button as far, as far as I can see from my perspective. That's why I did these uh, photographs to scale. I did on that side, I gotta do on this side now. And the same height.
just check something. I don't want to go much wider than what it is now, so you have to be careful. Just gotta put that muscle in. I'm going to raise his head just a little bit. That's the nice thing about this true form armature that I've got underneath here. And if you want to see how that started out, uh, go back a few days and you'll see where I started adding clay to the uh, true form armature. This is a 24 inch armature that uh, I cut down to make it a, a less than a full figure because I just wanted to do a portrait of him. I didn't want to do a full figure. These silicone tools, I, I'm sorry to say you can no longer get. They're actually indispensable uh, for what I do. You can make your own silicone tools and there's a couple people on YouTube that make their own silicone tools and they show you the product that they use to do it with. So uh, do a little investigating and you'll find information on how to do this. The lady that made these no longer makes them because it was hard on her hands and She's getting up there in age, too. A really nice lady. Lived in New Mexico. Now he's got a sharp undercut. There. A lot of this I'm gonna, like I say, smooth it out with my lighter fluid. Well, I don't know how much of what I did today was actually recorded. My cameras, both of them, shut down and they do it on their own, but they don't make a sound when they do. So you don't know when your damn camera turned off. I pretty much finished the uh, face today. Um, I put wrinkles in his forehead and uh, little striations in the skin that comes from stress. And, uh, and then I hit it with uh, lighter fluid. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. I use this uh, Ronsonol. It has a tendency to melt plastiline clay and I'm not sure why and I don't know what other clays it works good on but it does really good on plastiline clay and that's what this is it uh, takes down a lot of the uh, roughness of the clay also shows you where you need to add clay and uh, or you need to fill in a hole or so. There's a hole right there I need to fill in right underneath his eye there. It softens his forehead a little bit and makes it so that I can add hair to it tomorrow or the next time. And I apologize if you didn't get to see everything I did today. 
but it was really just tiny little details that just takes patience and uh, a steady hand. I'm happy with the pace. I think it looks like them. I have a little bit more to do with these uh, side puppy areas because there's not enough shadow there and that means there's not enough depth or roundness to the uh, that area. So that'll be something I'll tackle tomorrow. I can't do anything once I put the lighter fluid on because uh, the clay uh, is too slick because of the oil in the lighter fluid, but it takes about an hour, maybe two hours for it to completely evaporate so that you can start adding clay again. And uh, that's just the way that is. I'm ha happy. I can see some things I need to smooth out and shape a little bit more. But uh, other than that, I think uh, he's coming out just fine and it's going to look really good with his hair. I'll put ears on it tomorrow. And uh, we'll go from there. All right, everybody. Uh, good night. And uh, whether I do this tomorrow or the next day, I don't know. Well, tomorrow's Friday, isn't it? Today's Thursday. So it'll be either tomorrow or it'll be Saturday. It depends on things that come up that I'm not expecting. <laughs> Give me a thumbs up and share my video. And then check out my instructional DVDs, uh, the link down below this video. All right, see you next time.